So this is continuing lecture four, chapter four. Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, the second type of chemical reactions, acid-base reactions or neutralization reactions. Uh, so this is a proton transfer. Um, so you do need to know the six strong acids, uh, and they are listed here. Um, uh, these are the only ones that the AP recognizes as a strong acid. You sometimes see HClO3 listed in some um, resources, uh, but the AP just wants you to know six of them. Uh, strong bases are group 1A and 2A OHs. So anything from the first two columns on the periodic table, um, any of those elements um, attached to OH are considered a strong base. So that's easy to remember. Um, and when we are saying something is strong, we are saying that it completely breaks up or completely dissociates. So that's going to be um, a big theme uh, going forward in a lot of our discussions. We are going to spend a, a lot of time on acid-base chemistry, especially second semester. Uh, but we see that a lot of acid-base chemistry um, uh, pretty early on, so that's why I kind of go over it. So if I take a strong acid plus a strong base, I always get the same two products, water and what we call a neutral salt. So if I take sodium, excuse me, uh, sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide, I will make sodium sulfate and water. So that's kind of what I call my molecular equation or the formal balanced chemical equation. But the one below it is what I call my net ionic equation because the sodium sulfate is aqueous. Sodium attaches, um, sodium is always going to be an aqueous ion, whatever it's attached to. So really what is important is the H plus plus the OH gets to water. That is the idea of neutralization. Okay, so acids produce H plus, strong uh, bases produce OH minus, and they get together to essentially neutralize each other. Now, we also have uh, weak acids and weak bases, okay? Um, weak acid, WA, weak base, WB, and these are things that don't dissociate completely. So the big one that you do need to know is, of course, acetic acid. Acetic acid can be written two different ways, and I've showed you this before. Um, it only partially breaks up, so really these arrows should be pointing in both directions. They're at what we call an equilibrium, and we will discuss that as well. Um, so since this only partially breaks up, mostly it stays as the acetic acid form. You make very little H plus and very little acetate ion. Uh, so this is what we call a weak acid. Acid, um, because of that. Now, uh, magnesium hydroxide is considered more of a strong base, but it does have some issues with um, uh, some say that it's only partially dissociates because of the precipitation reaction that's taking place. Um, so you can kind of put that off to the side. A weak base is going to be ammonia. Okay, ammonia is the most classic weak base that we talk about. And again, this will all be covered a little bit more thoroughly uh, second semester. So one other thing I want to mention before we move on to um, oxidation reduction reactions um, is um, some acids like sulfuric acid, um, they have two H's, okay? So that's what it means to be diprotic. So when we're looking at these types of reactions, those hydrogens don't pop off um, together, they do it once at a, one at a time. So if I take H2SO4 with KOH, I actually um, go through a process of um, forming some of the it, um, intermediate ions. So K plus is really actually a spectator ion. Okay, so that is why in the second equation you will see that it's removed. So really what I'm looking at is OH is getting together with H um, to make water, and then you have one additional OH to, uh, again, completely neutralize it. So first thing that is formed is HSO4, and then this HSO4 loses one more hydrogen to become SO4 two minus. So H2SO4 plus 2OH gets me to SO4 2 minus and two waters. Again, I'm removing the K plus 
from that equation. So really, this is more of the net ionic equation for this reaction. What I want you to uh, just be introduced to is the fact that each hydrogen comes off one at a time and is neutralized by however many OHs you need to neutralize that with. Okay. So again, that's just some background information. So the third type of reaction, and this is just going to be an introduction to it, and then we're going to switch to a new video, um, is oxidation reduction. Again, these are called redox reactions. That's because somebody is losing electrons, somebody is gaining electrons. So this is all about electrons. This is all about electrons. Okay. And you have seen these reactions before, it's just you did not know that that's what they were called. So oxidation, or what we call a reducing agent, um, is something that loses electrons. So these are going to be metals on the left-hand side of the periodic table. So if we go back to what we were talking about previously, your first two columns is a plus one, plus two. Your transition metals have some kind of charge associated with them, usually a positive. So um, reduction oxidizing agent, again, that will be explained to you, you're gaining electrons. Those are going to be your non-metals, okay? So over here on the right, okay, they want to gain electrons in order to become a noble gas configuration. So there is a uh, silly ways of memorizing oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining electrons. One is called Leo the lion goes grr. Okay, Leo is the astrological sim, um, name of the lion. Uh, so Leo stands for the lo uh, losing electrons is oxidation. And the sound of Leo the lion goes is grr. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, you are gaining electrons and maybe again, if you remember silly things, maybe that will help you to remember it. So GER stands for gaining of electrons is reduction. Another one some students like is something called oil rig. Oil rig stands for oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Since we know it's always talking about electrons, I don't need to say anything more than that. So you do need to know oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So we are going to have to determine, essentially, who is losing and who is gaining electrons uh, by something called their oxidation states, something called their oxidation states. So um, most of the time, the oxidation state is the same as their charge. Um, so really, all I'm doing is changing kind of the language that we are using. And so that's why first year chemistry, we don't do too much with it because it's kind of uh, the same thing. So oxygen is always going to have a negative two oxidation state. Hydrogen is going to be a plus one. Um, exceptions, of course, if oxygen is a peroxide form, which I showed you in previous, um, or if it's a hydride, a metal hydride, it's going to be a negative one. But generally speaking, your ionic charge is going to be your oxidation state. So um, do you understand that any element is going to have an oxidation state of zero? So please write that in. And then you also, uh, I want to mention, is the seven diatomic elements, okay? Those are still considered elements. They are gonna have an oxidation state of zero. So how do you remember the seven um, diatomics? Um, start with the number seven. That's nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So it looks like the number seven. The only weird one that you have to remember is, of course, hydrogen way over there. Okay. So diatomics is H2, N2O2, F2Cl2, Br2I2. Okay. So those are still considered elements. Um, so uh, that is going to be what we. Um, are using here. So what I mean by identifying oxidation state is I've given you um, some compounds here. And what I want you to do is to take each individual element and figure out what their oxidation state is. The best way to do this is to go off of the periodic table, okay, and their charge, okay, and always start with the elements on the outside and then do the one on the inside last. So we know sodium is a plus one, 
uh, because it's in the first column of the periodic table. And from our rules, oxygen is negative two. That's also its charge, so that's really not a big mystery there. So I have two sodiums in this formula. So I have an overall plus two from the sodium. Oxygen, I have a four, so that's going to be a negative eight. So recognize these compounds, there are no charges there. There's no charge there. So this has to equal zero. So what is the charge of chromium going to have to be in order to get this to zero? Well, it's got to be a plus six in order to get rid of that negative eight. So your answer for these types of questions is sodium has an oxidation state of one, chromium is plus six, oxygen is negative two. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video, see if you could try the next one. See if you could try the next one. So magnesium has a plus two. Um, oxygen is negative two, so I only have one magnesium, so that's the plus two. I have seven times negative two gives me negative 14. Now, uh, chromium should then contribute the plus 12, but recognize that how many chromiums do you have in that formula? So that means each individual chromium is a plus six. Now realize their oxidation states might be exactly the same or they might change depending upon the situation. So see if you could take a look at these next two. Try the next two. So here's the answers. Potassium is plus one, manganese is plus seven, oxygen negative two. Silver is plus one, sulfur is plus two, oxygen is negative two. Now, if you have your uh, Flynn periodic table, you can actually find uh, the oxidation states on one side of the um, Flynn periodic table. So if I look at manganese, for instance, uh, anytime you see these numbers on the bottom, those are its oxidation states. So manganese could have a seven, six, four, two, or three and you will sometimes see one of the numbers or a couple of the numbers are bolded. Those are the most common oxidation states that you have. Now, you're not memorizing any of this. What I will be asking you to do is to take a look at uh, a compound, take a look at a situation and see what their oxidation states are. Now, do keep in mind that if I look at MN4 minus as a polyatomic ion, I can break it down that way as well. Because if I had four oxygens, that would give me a negative eight. Manganese must be the plus seven in order to give you a negative one. So the examples I gave you were all compounds, but if you have something with a charge, it will add up to that charge um, as well. 